Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today I've got a pretty cool video that involves several different processes. You've seen the title, you know what it is. I'm going to be engraving Deadpool on my bottle of Aviation Gin. So now I'm, I'm a big fan of Deadpool and Ryan Reynolds. Obviously, they're great movies. And also, because I've started bartending recently, well, just home bartending, I'm not working as a bartender. Uh, if you've seen my previous modeler video, or if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen some of the stuff I've been doing with that. But I got myself a bottle of Aviation Gin, which if you don't know, this company is owned by Ryan Reynolds. And on the front, it has this nice, flat, smooth area that looks like a great spot to engrave something. So I decided I'm going to engrave Deadpool right here on the front. I was initially planning to just stick this in my Glowforge laser cutter and cut it out. Unfortunately, it is just a tiny bit too thick, so I can't stick it in the laser. So instead, I'm going to have to sandblast it. So what that entails is cutting out a mask of rubber, sticking that on here, sandblasting it. Uh, and it'll etch what's not covered up by the mask and then peel it off. So the thing with engraving glass, even if I was doing it on the laser, is you can only get two colors from engraving glass. You can either get the unengraved glass or you can get the engraved. There's nothing in between like other materials I've done. So I have to get the picture into exactly black and white before I can engrave it. So I did some testing trying to use photo editors and different software to get a picture into that form, but I couldn't get it to look the way I wanted it. So instead, I'm just going to do a Sharpie portrait of Deadpool, and I'll use that. I'm going to do a really big drawing so I can get a lot of detail and not have the Sharpie bleed. And then I'll scan that and turn it into a vector and then sandblast it. Now one thing that I do know is going to happen is I'm going to make this drawing too detailed. And with my current sandblasting techniques, that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to develop some new sandblasting techniques. I've been working on something. Hopefully it's going to work. I mean, if you're seeing this video, it means it worked. Let's get to it. Here's the picture I'm going to be using. I can't digitally turn this in to just two colors in a way that looks good. There's definitely a way to do it. I just don't know how to do it. So instead, I'm going to be doing a Sharpie drawing. And because Sharpie bleeds, I'm going to be doing it on this massive piece of paper. All right, so while I could just sketch this by hand or do the grid method to copy this rough thing, that would take forever, especially since I haven't done it in a few years. So what I'm going to do instead, I printed it out nice and big on four sheets of paper. And I'm tape I've taped it to my bedroom window. And I'll just tape this over the top. I don't know how well you can see that. There you go. But I'll just trace in pencil. And then after I've traced in pencil and I'm happy with it, I'll take it down, go over it with pen and Sharpie. Make it a nice two-tone Sharpie portrait drawing thing. So the initial sketch is done. I'm pretty happy with it. And now I'm going to go over it with, I've got a fine tip Sharpie here and then just a regular Sharpie. I have not really done a thing like this before. I've done one other like Sharpie drawing. I'll just put it, put it right here if I can find it. But I've never done something exactly like this. So we'll see how it goes. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering, this was painted by a dolphin. So I held the canvas above the dolphin and it wiggled his head. So what I'm gonna do basically is go over all these lines with the fine tip, and then I'll just go in and fill in everywhere with this one. Um, I got my inspiration here. This big thing is gonna go there. Let's get to outlining. And now I'm going to, hopefully not ruining it, go in with the Sharpie and start filling in things. I'll be filling in that section of the mask, the swords, the hands. Hopefully I don't mess it up. So I had a time lapse going and for some reason it failed to record or something. I, I don't quite know what happened. Anyway, I have done the hands now uh, and I caught it in time. I'm just going to continue coloring it in. It's taking a little longer than I expected, but it's... Looking good, the outline with the black, uh, the fine tip definitely helped it. And to go along with this project, I've made a gin and tonic with some aviation gin. And let's get back to coloring. The drawing. 
drawing is done. We've got Alex Steele here as drawing entertainment. I'm pretty happy with it. So now I need to scan it, get it into the computer. I've now taken a picture of my drawing, made sure it's nice and square and in focus, put my phone on a tripod, and flooded the image with a lot of light. That way I didn't get any weird shadows or anything that could mess up the editing process. Then I took it into Graphic Converter, which is a free photo editor, and I just removed the background so that all the white paper is now removed. In a photograph, if you zoom in, you see that there are pixels on the edges. It's not the cleanest looking image and we've got lots of color variations. So I've taken it into Inkscape, which is another free software, and converted it into a vector. So now you can see it has even coloring. And if I zoom in, you can now see that it has infinite resolution. No matter how much I zoom in, we still have a perfect line. I exported that as an SVG and stuck it in the Glowforge software. One nice thing about the Glowforge software is I can just convert it into a cut and it automatically makes an outline for me. Here are my settings, precarious. So I don't think I've used this material on YouTube before. Basically what it is, is it's rubber with an adhesive back and I use it for sandblasting. So the method I was using before this project was take this piece of rubber, stick it in the laser, cut out the pattern, and then I'd take a piece of masking tape, stick that on top, flip it over, weed out everything I don't want, peel off the paper, stick it on something, peel off the masking tape, and then I'd sandblast onto that. The problem with that method is when you're weeding, it's very easy for very small pieces to come unstuck and get lost. So it's been about two weeks and I have now developed a method using this rubber to get much finer detail. I've cut this piece down so it fits on the bottle. I don't have the bottle with me at the moment. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue some aluminum foil to it. At the powers I'm using, the laser won't really go through the foil. It might go through in a few spots, but it won't go through the foil. On the good side, the non-sticky side, I'm just gonna use some Super 77 spray glue, glue the foil to it. And I'm actually gonna cut this from the back side. So I'm gonna flip my image, cut it from the back. That way everything is stuck down with the foil. And I'll, I'll explain the rest as I go. First, I got a nice smooth surface here. I'm gonna smooth out the foil. Got a spot now that is nice and smooth. I'm lay out both. It's just Super 77 spray glue. And Give both pieces a generous spray. Once it's dried to tackiness, I'm just gonna take these, stick them together. Make sure it's well stuck down. Don't want any bubbles, because then I might lose a piece later on. And I'm just gonna use a knife to cut off the excess foil. All right. Now that I've got this foil glued on, the laser at the settings I'm going to be using will only go through the rubber and will not touch the foil. And this will leave all the tiny little pieces stuck to the foil so I can't lose them. I just got to let this dry and then head to the laser. If you use the top link in the description, you can get up to $500 off one of these Glowforge laser cutters. Highly recommend it. It's a great laser, very affordable. This thing turned out pretty well. You can see that I flipped the image. This is gonna go this way. You can see, it, you can kind of see an outline. It almost burned through in a couple of places. But now the foil is holding everything together, so these pieces won't fall out. This material does put off a little bit of like dust-ish stuff, so I'm going to hit it with some canned air just to get that out. That was just so I don't get any dust on the adhesive when I peel the paper off. So now I'm gonna peel off the paper everywhere I don't want the glass engraved, and I'm just gonna leave everything else. Now I've finished removing the paper, so anywhere that there's the pink is now adhesive, and the white is still paper. I'm gonna stick it on the bottle. One problem with this method is there's not really a way to line it up properly, so here goes nothing. I think that's as about as straight as I can get it. Now I just need to make sure this is fully stuck down. There's a bit of a lip here. The words Portland are embossed on here. Is it embossed on glass? I don't know. They're raised lettering. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is just make sure every tiny bit is stuck down fully, and then I'm not going to remove the foil or weed out the other parts. I'm just going to take it straight into the sandblaster. The sandblaster will remove all the foil, and once the foil is removed enough around the part that still has the paper on it, then the air from the sandblaster will just pop that piece out, 
And once it's up, then I can sand blast the glass underneath. Now I've got the rubber on. And by the way, I have no association with Aviation Gin or Deadpool. I'm just doing this for fun because I'm a fan. Now what I have to do is I gotta cover up the rest of the bottle because while sandblasting is pretty directional, I don't want to mess up the label. The sandblaster would take this label off easy. And also there is still a little bit of gin left and I don't want to get sand in it. So I'm gonna find something to cover up the cap and the label and just mask out the rest, especially down here where I've got a little bit of glass exposed. I don't want any overspray. So it's a bit overkill, but I have now covered up all the important bits. I used electrical tape because I had a bunch of it lying around. So I put a piece of paper down underneath this so I didn't have the adhesive sticking to the label and ruining it. And then I used saran wrap over the cap and then put more electrical tape over the top of that to protect the like ounce and a half of gin left in here. And I'm just gonna take this directly into the sandblaster and I'll explain more there. I'm gonna take the bottle, stick it in there. I'm not gonna bother removing the foil because the foil will come off once I start sandblasting. All right, so basically, for those who don't know the way this works, compressed air comes in here, picks up the sand through this tube right here, and blasts it out the end when I pull the trigger. And so first thing I'm gonna do is remove the foil. I'll mostly do this in time-lapse because I have a small air compressor, so I can't continuously sandblast, which is a little annoying. So you can see it removes the foil, and then as soon as the foil is removed enough, the pieces that still have the paper on the back will pop out, and then I can sandblast the glass and give it a nice frosted finish. Sandblaster was having a lot of problems getting the sand to go through. It's a cheap sandblaster, so to be expected. Hopefully I got everywhere. I'm a little nervous about these skinny parts on top of the head and on the elbows and a little bit right here. Really hope it worked, but it's time to peel all this stuff off. Well, so far the label has survived unharmed. Really hope this worked. It's got everything off. Some areas are a little faint. So this thing turned out okay. I was having some trouble with the sandblaster. It wasn't spraying out sand half the time. I think I fixed the problem, but that caused some areas to not be fully engraved and also caused some of the masking to come off. So it's, it's not a perfect engraving. I'm not entirely happy with this one. However, I have a solution. I got a fresh bottle. So I'm just gonna cut it out again. And I have a few little modifications I'm gonna make to the engraving process. Let's just do it again. So I don't wanna bore you guys with repeating things too much. So I'm gonna skip over some of the process on the neck on the second bottle. So I've cut out another one of these. It took about two minutes on the Glowforge. So I'm just gonna weed this out and stick it on the bottle. I don't know if it'll make a difference, but I've got some rubbing alcohol here and I'm gonna thoroughly clean the bottle with alcohol before. That might help, I don't know, but it can't hurt. So I got the new stencil on and one change that I did do is I peeled off the foil around the edges so that when I tape around to protect the glass and the label. The one, one problem I had last time was once I sandblasted the foil off, then I had a gap underneath. And when I was sandblasting, I could get a little bit of sand up underneath. And it's not gonna cause a problem, but might as well just seal it down. So I'm gonna tape it up to protect it because sandblasting will ruin the label if it gets touched. And I wanna keep the label. So I'm gonna put this piece of paper over the label and then tape over it. That way I don't have the adhesive on the label and I don't ruin that. And then for the cap, I'm gonna do, again do saran wrap and tape. All right, I used electrical tape again. Paper under to protect the label, saran wrap under here, so I don't ruin the gin. The backside doesn't need protecting because only direct sand from the nozzle will etch the glass, so I don't need to worry about covering the back. I'm just gonna set this in the black box. Then remove the foil, get all the little pieces out. I think it is done. There you can see some places here where the masking actually came off, but I just tried to avoid it. I think I did an okay job there. Another piece there that came off, a little piece there. But in general, I think it's good. So I'm going to unmask this, and I'm pretty sure that I got into these tiny little areas that I missed last time. I successfully did not mess up the label. I did scuff the sticker over the, the cap a little bit, but that's fine. Now it's time for the big Unveil. 
looking good so far. Looks like I actually made it into the small area around the head. It's looking pretty good. There's one spot right here where I didn't quite get it, but that's not really noticeable. And now cut to the backlit glamour shots. second try turned out much better. I'm very glad I redid it. In a perfect world, I would do a few more, but I can't afford that much gin. So, this was a pretty fun project. If you'd like to see some of the bartending I've been doing, follow me on Instagram. So hope you enjoyed this little project. It was pretty fun to do. If you liked it, hit the like button, because that's what it's for. I don't know. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. It helps push this to more people. It helps me grow the channel. If you'd like to see more projects, hit the subscribe button. Share it to a friend. I got tons of more cool projects coming. Hopefully I'll get them out soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.